morning. Today we're going to be finishing our series on the book of Acts that we've been going through this August. And we're finishing with the story of Cornelius and Peter. We remember last week that uh, God visited Peter on the roof, remember, in Simon the Tanner's house. And he said to him, go eat. And he had this, this sheet full of things that he wasn't supposed to eat and things that he was supposed to eat. What was the point? The point was that he was about to send him to Cornelius the Gentile. A God-fearing man, yeah, but still a Gentile, which was a big no-no for the Jews at that time. And so God was saying to him, I don't care if you think that they're worthy. I'm calling you to go and share the good news with them. And so our text today is picks up with, with uh, Peter at the door of Cornelius' house. And before he enters, we understand that Cornelius at that very moment is inside reading scripture. And then Peter knocks on the door. And in our scripture today, we hear the story of Peter sharing the gospel with Cornelius, with somebody in a house that he didn't want to be in, but he was faithful. And as a result, Cornelius came to believe and he was baptized. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit came down upon him. And Peter was amazed because the Holy Spirit was only supposed to come down upon Jews that believed in Jesus in his mind. But it was in that moment that he realized he'd been wrong. In that moment, he realized that this Gentile, whom he formerly had called dirty, untouchable, unclean, was now his brother in Christ. And it changed Peter and it changed the ministry of the church. That's what we want to talk about today. Who are the people that we don't want to share the gospel with? And what is our call to share the gospel? I start with a story of an Iranian pastor. Uh, you know, in Iran, it's very dangerous to be Christian because um, you can die for it, actually. To convert somebody is a capital offense. So he was with his wife and they were traveling along and they got thirsty. So they stopped at a little mini mart in Iran and he went in to get water. But before he left the car, his wife said, give that man a Bible. Well, that man was a swarthy, hostile looking man standing on the outside of this mini mart with a with a machine gun. He went into the mini mart and he came out and he got in the car. He's like, I'm not, I am not sharing the gospel with that man. He got down the road a little bit and the, the wife said, you didn't, you didn't share the gospel with him, did you? He said, no. She said, she got quiet. And you know, when a wife gets quiet, men get real nervous because I think that for men, my experience as a wife, um, there's nothing worse than knowing that you're going to get nagged for a long time, <laughs> especially get nagged about the fact that you wouldn't share the gospel with somebody. So he turned around and he looked at his wife and he said, if this gets me killed, he took the Bible, got out of the car and he handed it to the man. And the man broke down in tears. And he said to him, I had to walk three days in order to get to this village. But I did it because three days ago, an angel appeared to me and he told me to walk to this village and wait until someone had given me the book of life. Thank you for giving me this book. The minister became a courageous witness to Christ. Eventually, he was martyred as a Christian in Iran. But on that day, he chose to believe in Christ more than his fears. You know, there are a couple things that keep us out from sharing the gospel. And the first is fear. I think, though, that the second is pride and prejudice. You know, Peter faced that, too, as he came to the door of Cornelius. But even as tradition screamed, don't go, the Holy Spirit screamed, go. 
the words of Revelation 2-4 come to mind. Yet I hold this against you, that you've forsaken the love that you had first. Who was Peter's first love? It was Jesus and his message and his call. But he'd allowed the traditions and the prejudice of the people around him to start to get in his way. What's the prejudice that we're talking about? People aren't like us. I think that's the one of the biggest prejudices that we face as Christians. We can't afford, though, to base our evangelism on our sense of what's appropriate. To the extent that we insist on our kind of people to share the gospel with, that's the extent to which we miss out on the greatest gift of all, and that's sharing the one we love, that's sharing Christ with the people that he brings to us. It's almost a forsaking, no, it is a forsaking, of our basic call, and that's to bring the light of Jesus Christ to all the nations. There's a quote I really like that goes something like this. Life comes to us on the way to someone else. And if we pass it on, we grow strong. But if we keep it to ourselves, we wither and we die. I think that's why so many Christians and so many churches today have feeble faith. Or it's why so many churches are dying. You know, we like to say that it's because of the culture. The culture's changed. You know, it's, it's, it's not comfortable anymore. But I would like us to take a moment to think that perhaps the culture has changed because we were unafraid. We were afraid to share the gospel. So let's talk a little bit about this fear. The Gentile believer, the seeker with the gun, fear almost stopped Peter and it almost stopped the Iranian pastor. What is the fear that we have? That we will get laughed at? That somebody will be angry with us? Maybe that we won't share the gospel the way it should be shared. And then sometimes it's just, I won't do it. <laughs> but make no mistake, the fear is a real challenge to our evangelism. And evangelism is one of the hardest aspects of being Christian. I used to say, I'm a Presbyterian. I believe in predestination, so I don't have to share the gospel. I didn't know how to do it. I felt really silly. I felt really exposed. I felt really scared. And then one day in Virginia Beach with some of the members of this small 25 member church that was dying, we decided what would happen if we just did it? What would happen if we just went out into the street? This was our neighborhood. We were the only church in that area. What would happen if we went out and just got to know the neighbors? And so each one of us took a street, a short one block street. We went door to door and we just said this, Hi, we're from Christ Presbyterian Church around the corner, and we're your neighbors. And we just want to get to know you. We don't, we don't want anything more than that. And I'm Ellen, and I shook the hands of the people that had the nerve to answer the door. And then I said this, we're a praying church. Is there anything we can pray about for you? And some people shared things, and some people didn't. But let me tell you about one woman. When I knocked on the door, she opened it, and there were tears in her eyes. She was having surgery on Monday, and this was Saturday, and she was scared out of her mind. And she said, I feel so alone. I said, let's pray about that. That's all I did. I prayed with her about her surgery. Now, guess what? When I back, went back the next time, I asked her how her surgery went, and immediately, there was an ability to have a conversation that would have never been there if I hadn't had the courage to just knock on the door. But what happens if that's even too scary? And believe me, that's scary. Let me tell you about another person that I met. Her name is Carla, and she had three children. 
And one Sunday morning, we noticed that she was out with her children on the playground at Christ Presbyterian Church in Virginia Beach. Church was just about to start. And I said, Larry, why don't you go out there and ask her if she wants to come into church? I fully expected that Larry was gonna come back with some excuse. But Larry came back with Carla and her three kids in tow. And they started to go to our church. And we started to get to know them. And we heard the story that Carla had. The story about how she had been sexually harassed at her job and that because of it, she had been fired. And she didn't have a husband, that had ended poorly. And that it was all on her and they were barely making it. Kids had holes in the toes of their shoes. Well, this 25 member church started to love her and care for her. We brought her Christmas, we even brought her a tree. And little by little, Carla started to get on her feet. She was open to the gospel because we cared for her. A year later, I heard from her after I'd moved to Charlotte that she had won her court case against this boss and that she was doing quite well and that the kids had everything that they needed now. Here was a, here was a, a capable woman that just needed somebody to care for her and a love for her. And my friends, that's evangelism. The point is, we can't let fear stop us from sharing the gospel. The very fact that we're afraid gives us the opportunity to rely on God in ways that perhaps we never had before and never would unless we were open and ready to do so. Are you willing to share the gospel? Are you willing to do it when the Lord brings the opportunity? Because as Corey Ten Boom says, she says, I have a glove here and it's in my hand. The golf can't do anything by itself, but when my hand is in it, it can do many things. True, it's not the glove, but my hand that the glove acts with. She said, we are the gloves. And the Holy Spirit, when it's in us, does the job. It makes the glove move. She said, we have to make room for the hand so that every finger can fill in. You know, we've done that at Beth Bethpage Presbyterian Church too, with our Latino ministry. They didn't have a home. They had 12 to 15 people that wanted to worship, but didn't have a home. And all we had to do was to say, come, be with us. It was outreach, which is a form of evangelism. And as we did our, our Suds of Love laundry ministry, we asked a couple others, why don't you come? We have a congregation here at Bethpage that would love to have you as a part of them. And the ministry of Christ Savior grew more and more. We were a part of that evangelism. It was easy because it was relational. It was just who we were. Really what evangelism boils down to is this. It's not about who's the right kind of person, our kind of people. It's not about so much our fears. It's about answering Jesus' question. Do you love me? Because if we do and when we do love Jesus, we're able to share him. I know that there are probably two people in your life that need to know the love of Jesus. That need to hear about the fact that it doesn't matter what they've done, that his grace covers everything. Two people. I want you to take some time today to sit down 
think of the two people that you might, over time, when the Lord gives you the opportunity, just share who Jesus is in your life. That's all. You just have to allow the Holy Spirit to fill your glove. And I want you to pray about that for four weeks. Lord, make me open if this opportunity comes to share the gospel with these people. Jesus said, do you love me to Peter three times? And after Peter's response, yes, he said, then 10 and feed my sheep. Who is Christ calling you to tend and feed with the story of Jesus Christ? To love him more than your comfort? To overcome any fear that you may have? To let go of your pride and your prejudice? To be the light of Christ to the nations? To rely on God for life that comes to us and that can come to someone else? That's what it means to pass on the good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what it means to grow strong. But friends, let us never forget that if we keep it to ourselves, we will wither and die. Don't keep it to yourself. Share the love of Jesus Christ. Thanks for being here today. God bless you. Bye-bye.